High above the city, on a tall stone column, stood the statue of the Happy Prince. He was covered all over with thin leaves of fine gold which shone in the sunlight. He had two bright sapphires for eyes, and a large red ruby glowed on the hilt of his sword. He was very much admired indeed. The mayor and town councillors used to look up at him as they strutted through the square on their way to the town hall. Very impressive, said the mayor. Almost as impressive as I do myself. Almost as impressive as you do yourself, said the town councillors, who always agreed with the mayor, and they strutted on to the town hall. One night, a little swallow flew over the city. Shall I rest? He said. I'm very tired. Then he saw the statue on the tall column. This is just the place. A fine position with plenty of fresh air. And he settled down between the feet of the happy prince and prepared to go to sleep. Just as he was putting his head under his wing, a large drop of water fell on him. What a curious thing, he said. There is not a single cloud in the sky, and yet it's raining. This European climate is really dreadful. Then a second drop fell. He looked up and saw that the eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears, and tears were running down his golden cheeks. His face was so beautiful in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. Who are you? he said. I'm the happy prince. You could have fooled me, said the swallow. Why are you crying? When I was alive, and had a human heart, said the statue. I did not know what tears were, for I lived in the palace of Sans Souci. My life was filled with pleasures and my courtiers called me the Happy Prince. My garden was surrounded by a high wall and I never bothered to find out what lay beyond it. But now that I'm dead, they have set me up here so high that I can see all the ugliness and all the misery of my city. And though my heart is made of lead, I cannot help weeping. Lead? Isn't he made of solid gold? Said the swallow to himself. But he was too polite to make any personal remarks out loud. Far away, the statue went on. Far away in a little street there is a broken down house. One of the windows is open, and through it I can see a poor woman seated at a table. In a bed in the corner of the room her little boy is lying ill. He has a fever and is asking for oranges. His mother has nothing to give him but river water, so he's crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, will you take the ruby out of my sword hilt and give it to her? My feet are fastened to this pedestal and I cannot move. My friends are waiting for me in Egypt, said the swallow. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. 
Won't you stay with me for one night and be my messenger? The boy is so thirsty, and the mother so unhappy. The happy prince looked so sad that the swallow was sorry. It is very cold here, he said, but I will stay with you for one night and do as you ask. So the swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and flew away with it in his beak over the shimmering roofs of the town. on his bed, and the exhausted mother had fallen asleep. In he hopped, and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Then he flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with his wings. How cool I feel, said the boy. I must be getting better. And he sank into a peaceful sleep. Then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what he'd done. It's curious, he said, but I feel quite warm now, although it is so cold. That is because you have done something good, said the prince. And the little swallow began to think, and then he fell asleep. Thinking always made him sleepy. When the moon rose, the swallow flew up to the happy prince. I'm off to the pyramids, he sang. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me for one night longer? My friends are waiting for me in Egypt, answered the swallow. They'll be circling the great sphinx by now. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Far away across the city I see a young man in a garret. He's trying to finish a play for the director of the theater, but he's too cold to write any more. There is no fire in the grate, and hunger has made him weak. I will wait with you one night longer, said the swallow, who really had a good heart. Shall I take him another ruby? I haven't another ruby, said the prince. My eyes are all that I have left. They are made of rare sapphires. Pluck out one of them and take it to him. He will sell it to the jeweler and buy firewood and finish his play. Dear Prince, said the Swallow, I can't do that. And he began to weep. Swallow, Swallow, little Swallow, said the Prince, do as I command you. So the Swallow plucked out the Prince's eye and flew away to the writer's garret. Thank <laughs> you.
The young man, who was deep in despair, had his head buried in his hands so that he didn't even hear the flutter of the bird's wings. When he looked up, he found the beautiful sapphire lying on the desk beside him. I'm beginning to be appreciated, he said. This is from some admirer. Now I can finish my play. And he set to work with new hope. The next night, the swallow tried again. I'm come to bid you goodbye, he sang. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Won't you stay with me one night longer? It's winter, answered the swallow. And the snow will soon be here. I have to go to Egypt where the sun is warm. Dear Prince, I must leave you, but I will never forget you. And next spring I will bring you back two beautiful jewels in place of those you have given away. In the square below, said the happy prince, there stands a little match girl. She has dropped her matches in the gutter and they are all spoiled. Her father will beat her if she doesn't bring home some money so she's crying. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her and her father will not beat her. I will stay with you just one night longer, said the swallow, but I cannot pluck out your other eye. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. As I command you. So he plucked out the prince's other eye and darted down to the square with it. He swooped past the match girl and slipped the jewel into the palm of her hand and she ran home laughing. Then the swallow came back to the prince. You're blind now he said, so I will stay with you forever. No, little swallow, said the poor prince. You must go away to Egypt. I will stay with you forever, said the swallow. And he settled at the prince's feet and fell asleep. All next day, he sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of the wonderful things that he had seen in strange lands. Dear little swallow, said the prince, fly over my city and tell me what you see there. circled over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses. And he flew into dark alleyways and saw the white faces of starving children.
flew back and told the prince what he had seen. I am covered with fine gold, said the prince. You must take it off, leaf by leaf, and give it to the poor people of the city. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold the swallow picked off, till the happy prince looked dull and grey. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor, and the children's faces grew rosier and they laughed and played. snow came, and after the snow came the frost. Prince's shoulder once more. Goodbye, dear Prince. Goodbye, he whispered. I'm glad you're going to Egypt at last, little swallow, said the Prince. You've stayed here too long. It is not to Egypt that I am going, said the swallow. And he kissed the happy Prince and fell down dead at his feet. crack sounded inside the statue, as if something had broken. The leaden heart had snapped right in two. Next morning, the mayor was strutting through the square in company with the town councillors. As they passed the tall column, he looked up at the statue. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, he said. How oh, shabby the happy prince looks. How oh, shabby indeed, echoed the town councillors. And there is a dead bird at his feet, the mayor continued. We must issue an order that birds are not allowed to die here. The town clerk made a note. So, they pulled down the statue of the happy prince. <laughs> Then they melted it in a furnace, and the mayor held a meeting of the corporation to decide what was to be done with the metal. We must have another statue, he said, and of course it shall be a statue of me. It shall be a statue of me, echoed each of the town councillors. Not you, me, said the mayor. Not you, me, echoed the councillors. And that was the start of a quarrel that went on for a very long time. One 
What a strange thing, said the foreman of the workmen at the foundry. This broken heart will not melt in the furnace. We must get rid of it. And he threw it on a dust heap, where it lay next to the body of the dead swallow. God looked down on the city and turned to one of his angels. Bring me the two most precious things you can find, he said. The angel searched high and low, in the woods and fields, in the great palaces and in the poor back streets of the city, until he found what he wanted. Then he returned to God, bringing him the leaden heart and the dead swallow. You have chosen rightly, said God, for in my garden of paradise, this little bird shall sing forevermore, and in my city of gold, the happy prince shall praise me.